So, so analyzers are something for the uh, shack. Okay, so. Yeah, yeah. That, that is, I, I remember seeing that one. Could tell us a little bit about it, Chuck. This is called the Mini 60. It's, um, it's kind of a small version of the Sark 100, I think it was. Right, right. And is that a U kit? No, no, it comes already built. Um, it's really compact. I took it to Mount Pacifico with me. Um, it, it, it does all the bands on here, but if you hook it to an Android tablet, it gives you the graphs and stuff like uh, what's the little one you love there, uh, Ape? The, um, the Smith, the Smith chart. It gives you all the charts and stuff. Well, it gives you the kind of like, kind of like what this one will do with the, uh, um, right, the, the waveforms and all that stuff. It, it's really nice. And it's real. It's got a nice color um, screen on it when you do it that way. Uh, I just I always have to remember how to do it, but it'll do. It'll do. If I don't know if you guys can. Can you even see the screen? It's green no. screening out. It looks pretty it cool, is. though. It, well, that's why it's, that's the way it really looks. No. Yeah. <laughs> right, it looks, it's it looks see, like a see through. through. Yeah, it um, it does all the bands from, uh, I think it goes to uh, 6 meter to uh, 160. And, and you can run a scan on each band. You just push the scan button, and uh, it'll tell you where your lowest SWR is and stuff. It's, it's pretty nice. It's fairly accurate. Uh, I didn't have anything before that would do six meter, and that's kind of why I got it. And then I, I thought it would be a nice one to take uh, portable. It's it's metal. It's got a nice heavy case to it, you know, and uh, it turns off automatic. And it's it's what we like a USB charge where you just plug it into a USB and charge it before you leave. That's USB C, nice. right? No, it's not that new. Boo! I know it was. I don't know. I don't know if C was even out when this thing was made. So the battery's internal then. Yeah, and it lasts quite a while. Actually. Nice. So I got uh, this MFJ two two six. I'm sorry about my focus tonight. I don't have it on. I don't think. Uh, anyway, it's the MFJ two two six, and it does like the Smith charts and everything, which is nice. Um, it, it runs on AA batteries. Uh, what I will say. Hold on a it, second, son. Let's take a look at them batteries up close. Oh no, no you don't want to see what batteries they are. They look They're, like Rayovac. They are Rayovac. They are. Why is my phone? I got to work. You got the Walmart here. Rayovac up in there. Hey, Come on, son. You ain't got rechargeables over there. <laughs> no, <laughs> man. I'm telling no. you. But what I will say about that, though, is uh, something about the, the way the batteries seat in here. I almost need to get a piece of foam right here because I'll be walking around or whatever, and I'll turn this on, or if I move it slightly, the batteries will come loose. So I'll be trying to do a reading, and the battery comes loose. It's kind of a pain. Um, and you're like, damn. he's carrying that on his belt every day. I do. He's like, damn, I lost, <laughs> I lost my, uh, I lost my oh, readings. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, I got, I got a call. <laughs> is that Mike's mom? Mike's mom? It's Mike's, Mike's mom. mom. Yeah. That and uh, a yellow bowfang, and uh, you're all official. Uh, it does go up to 230 <laughs> meg megahertz, which is nice. But what you realize is, you think that 230 megahertz is going to be nice, so it goes uh, one megahertz to 230. But then you get up to 230, and you're like, man, I wish I had it for UHF 70 centimeters as well. Uh, right. So it's kind of like one of those things where I feel like I need to update this automatically. The nice feature is, is you could plug it into your computer, and you could run the uh, software directly from. Well, you could run the software and spew the information directly to your computer, essentially. Oh, which I do enjoy. Uh, you could also save it in a file, and it'll allow you to later then come back and load it up on the computer, which is cool. You have up to like 30 memories, I think it is. No, that's awesome. I, I do want to get my hands on one of those one day. Um, MFJ also has a really small antenna analyzer um, that they're putting out now that looks like it's, uh, looks like it's pretty good. Uh, K6ARK, our buddy Adam, he says, you boys aren't the replacement, you're the A-team. <laughs> well, 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 thanks, man. We totally oh, appreciate wow. that. That was nice. So, uh, we're yeah, we're sure definitely bringing Thank our you. A game. And that, yeah. um, our, our buddy Larry off the grid is saying his favorite piece of equipment is his Nano VNA. Yeah. Um, it's no secret I'm a Nano VNA fanboy. Um, I know a lot of folks uh, don't like them that much, but um, this is the Nano VNA. Um, eight, it's the H4, so it's the 4-inch screen. I have the original with the 2.8 screen. Um, I don't use it anymore um, since, I, since I picked this up. Um, and I should have got it, brought it in here. Actually, in the other room, I've got the Nano VNA V2 um, Ham Radio 2.0. Jason sent that over to me. Uh, he had a spare one, so uh, I'll be doing a video on that pretty soon. But what's really handy about these, and much like the, much like the, um, 
the VNA that um, <laughs> the dude was showing us. You can hook them up to the hook them up to the computer. So uh, doesn't dance. Oh, so uh, thank you to uh, Shane at this side of Ham Radio for the super chat. Um, <laughs> I re really appreciate it. Um, so so thank you. And and then it looks like a Dan beer snack. Um, the Ham Viking over there is uh, is a fan of the Nano VNA. I bought this uh, not thinking oh. I'd ever get into Ham Radio. Um, probably my 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 go to. Well, I've got the two. And then I've got a I've got a common here too as a friends, but uh, I really am starting to enjoy that. But this one's this one's been super handy. I didn't think I, I was in I was going to get into ham radio, or I would have bought one that went a little higher. But so this goes to thirty megahertz. Uh, the brick expert is a really nice uh, piece of machinery. There, you know, yeah, they, sure they make a, they make a really good product. Um, they do. They, they've gone. They've gotten super expensive though. I think when I bought mine, it wasn't that bad, but. Uh, and I think I think mine needs to go back in and have some. Sometimes it, it shows me some weird, uh, like it changes, you know, the, the SWR. Oh, the, the Comet uh, CA five hundred. I did a, a video on this. Um, I, I thought I would have got way more hits on it because I thought that was interest a lot of people. But uh, I'm beginning to really like it. It's solid. It's kind of heavy, but nice metal case. The batteries, I've my buddy gave it to me with the batteries in it. It's it's not mine, and uh, they seem to last, as opposed to the older MFJs, which from what I understood, I've never used one. Oh, well, you, you have a video on that, don't you, Chuck? Yeah, it's 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 really. I mean, I, I went through it real quick. I didn't think I was going to have it this long, so I did it when I first got it. But I keep asking, him, "Do you need it back?" And he's like, "No, no, keep it." Okay, so I will. But I'll probably end up. Maybe getting one of these because it goes way. Oh, I high. thought you were gonna say you probably end up sending it to me, but uh, well, well. Yeah, I can't do that. Oh. It, it goes to at one point eight to five hundred megahertz, so it's really, uh, and, and it's not. I was I, I forget I, I put the price in my video, but uh, pretty reasonable compared to buying. I, I I don't know that you can hook it to a computer. That's the only thing it doesn't do. The other two do well. You kind of hit on a point there that I overlooked on the MFJ. Uh, it must be an MFJ quality, but the battery life on this thing is garbage. I mean, it seems like every other time I use this thing, I got to replace the batteries. <laughs> Son, it ain't the battery life; it's the batteries. <laughs> it's the batteries. It, I got gotcha. you. It's the batteries. You need to get yourself some N loop um, so, or, or EBL rechargeables. Jim's so, asking, oh. what model is that? Which which one? The Comet. He also said he bought the 55 and wish he had bought the bigger one too. <laughs> kind of the same as me. The uh, Comet is a, uh, a CAA 500 but Mark II. Th those those things get expensive though. Those those um, the, the Zoom ones. Yeah, the Ray yeah. Experts. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think for the money, I think this little Comet is one of the best buys out there right now. So Gordon's Farmers Forge has a not a dumb question. He said it was a dumb question, but it's not because it's a good question. Uh, is this an SWR meter? And in short, the answer is yes. Uh, not only is it an SWR meter, but it, it could do quite a bit more. Um, mm -hmm. But ultimately, at the end of the day, yes, you could use it as SWR meter. Yeah, now Adam down there can can probably uh, – hey, Ron, thanks, thanks for watching, bud um, – can probably expand on, on what I'm going to say. Um, a lot of people will think about SWR as a 50-ohm – uh, impedance match from your radio to your transmission line to your antenna and then when it's not a 50 ohm uh, match then you start to have SWR problems <clears throat> but there's also the um, issue of resonance and then when you study for your general you learn that resonance, resonance is really where your capacitive and inductive reactants are equal and so with some of these uh, more expensive meters and tools you'll be able to use things like Smith charts to find out if your if your antenna is too inductive or too um, uh, too resistive and then you'll be able to tune that in to actually get better resonance than you would just on a straight 50 ohm impedance uh, load um, it's called complex impedance and it starts to get very very complex uh, that's why it's called complex uh, when, when you figure it out but yeah but tools like this will really help you figure it out um, they're very intimidating at first and the more um, raw a tool is like a nano vna um, the nano VNA is, is a tough one to learn at first, but the, the, the zoom or the rig experts make it super, super easy. 
Um, but it's all part of learning. It's just like when you buy any tool, you're, you're a novice using it at first, and it just takes time to build that expertise. I think yeah, that I was, was... Go ahead, Chuck. I was going to say, I, when I was first getting into building antennas and stuff, um, the guys I used for Elmer's, they were, they were actually online on a site that I, I, I was on before. And your lowest SWR is not where your antenna is the most resonant. Your most resonant spot is X equals zero is the most resonant part of your, is where your antenna that would be the best. Not just, it's not, not always. And sometimes it'll, it'll be close to your lowest SWR. So that's something to remember too, when you're, if you, if you really want to set your ant antenna up for a certain frequency, you try to get as close as you can to um, X equals zero on that frequency. Yeah. Not you want to be really right in the middle of that, sm that Smith chart. Yeah. I think uh, you pretty much nailed what I would want to say if I would have known how to explain it, but that's pretty much the perfect way to explain it too. Um, you know, I could have a 1.1 SWR and I'm like, yeah, I got a 1.1 SWR. <laughs> that's great, buddy. But uh, have, have you looked at your impedance values lately? For example, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, uh, it, it's like a, it's like a dummy load, right? Like a dummy load, dummy load is a one to one, um, but it, it it's purely resistant. There's no antenna. inductive. Yeah. And Ape, you and I talk about this all the time offline. It's, um, you know, SWR is not the number that you want to look at. It's it's one of a series of. Mm -hmm. And if you're just looking at that, like like Dude said, if you're just looking at one-to-one -one SWR, that's that's not the answer. Yeah, that was how it was in the CB radio days. I'm like, yeah, I got a one-to-one -one SWR. Why is things not, or why are things not working? And why is or are things not working? And <laughs> down the road, you start to realize that there's more to life than just the SWR number, you know? Yeah. Well, your well, ham radios um, also pull back if your SWR is too high. A CB just keys down. Oh, yeah. It'll keep going. It'll, huh? it up. it'll just burn it up. So. so that's a valuable piece of equipment. Would you say for somebody, it's their first time in ham radio and they're looking for their first piece of a test equipment, would you say either an SWR meter or an analyzer would probably be the best first piece of test equipment? I think it yeah. would be. 